Hello everyone and welcome to the frontiers of parameterized complexity. Our guest of today is Karol Vigritsky, who will speak about improvement of Schroeper Shamir on subset sum, which didn't happen for many years, right? Please, Karol. All right. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. This is a joint sport with Jesper Nedelov, uh, and I will tell you about a slightly improved space complexity of subset sum. Uh, so before we begin, let me tell you what the subset sum problem is. So in the subset sum, you are given a set S of n integers and a target T. And your goal is to find a subset of this set with the total sum of the elements in this set equal to T. So for example, when you are given the set of uh, these six numbers, 2, 4, 9, 10, 16, and 19, and the target is 27, then you can safely output yes, because you can select Two, nine, and 16, and it will be equal to 27. So as you all know, this problem is simply hard. And in this talk, we will consider the exact algorithm for this problem. So first improvement over a trivial 2DN algorithm was given by Horovitz and Sani in, uh, in, in the 70s. And they proved that you can solve subset sum in two to the n half time and to the, the n space. So this O-star notation hides polynomial factors in N. And a big open question is whether you can solve subset sum any faster in the worst case. So can you improve this two to the N half to be 1.99 to the N half? This is a big open question in the, in the field that still stands open to this day. And uh, five years later, after, Schoppel, uh, after, after Horowitz and Sunny, Schroeppel and Shamir uh, proved that you can improve the space complexity of subset sum to be uh, two to the n over four. So they have the same time as Horowitz and Sani, but the space complexity of their algorithm is, uh, is, is, is two to the n over four. And they leave an open question whether you can improve the space complexity even further. So. Can you get um, uh, the same running time, but uh, improve the space complexity to, 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 to be 0 0.249999? And, and in this talk, I will I will tell you that yes, you can actually uh, answer yes to this question. Subset sum can be solved in 2 to the n half time and 2 to the 49999n space. Uh, let me also so remark that uh, this is currently best uh, randomized algorithm for all instances of subset sum, and it works seamlessly for knapsack, subset sum, and binary integer programming via non reduction. So uh, this result implies uh, some other, other more general uh, results. Okay. Uh, I like this question very much. Like, can, can you solve subset sum in this uh, faster than mid in the middle time? And uh, for the 50 years, people have also been inspired by this question and worked worked heavily on this question and in, uh, inspired many fields like cryptography, fine grained complexity, pseudo polynomial algorithms, and uh, we have some recent problems on exact algorithms and its parameters. Uh, uh, and parameterized algorithms. Uh, so let me tell you what it is. So, so in the field of cryptography, you, you, you can see the development of meeting the middle technique that is, is very useful in this field. Uh, another useful thing about knapsack and subset sum is the Merkel Hellman systems. So, so uh, people in cryptography base uh, hardness of certain systems uh, on the hardness of subset sum uh, for NAPSAC. So it's very important to get this question right because if you could solve it in 1.00001 to the end, then this system wouldn't, wouldn't be very useful for cryptography. Other, other progress was made to, by, by these people in the average case NAPSAC and randomized NAPSAC. So it's important that this, uh, this, uh, this Knapsack problem runs in the average case regime for the cryptography regions. And this question also inspired several problems like uh, shortest vector problems or LLL algorithm. 
And most importantly for this part, uh, Triple Gatti group has also developed this uh, very nice technique that is called the presentation technique. And so we will heavily use this technique from Triple Gatti. And let me also tell you some, some, some ideas that were inspired by this question in the complexity. So let me mention that this was the original NP-complete problem from the CARP 21 uh, uh, NP-complete problems. Uh, and then later it inspired the KSAM conjecture. So I will later explain what the KSAM problem is, but uh, basically assume that the hard hardness of this question that there is so lack, lack of progress inspires, uh, uh, we can ask, with this hardness of this question, we can assume that other problems in P are hard. For example, case some problem is hard, is believed to be hard precisely because there is not much progress in this question. Uh, also important uh, class of problems are problems that are free sum equivalent. So, 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 so that there is a large number of uh, geometric problems that uh, are hard and there's no improvement. And we can explain why there is no improvement in, in this algorithm because uh, precisely because they are all equivalent and they are equivalent to this uh, uh, subset some flavor problem. And also they inspired several pro progress in pseudo polynomial algorithms. So, so we have currently the 20 pH lower bounds for the subset sum in, in this regime. Uh, also, uh, this question also inspired some progress, progress in the polynomial algorithm. So we have the dichotomy between knapsack and subset sum, and some problem in the in the pseudo polynomial regime, and also uh, there's some progress in approximation algorithms. And briefly, uh, there are some new words on exact algorithms and new techniques that were developed precisely for that. So, so recently, uh, Banzal et al. Uh, gave a 2 to the 0 0.8 and time and polynomial space algorithms for an upset, which was, which was a major breakthrough in the area. And uh, also, Nederlof et al. Uh, gave, uh, proposed the equivalence of knapsack and subset sum in, the different, in this regime. Subset sum and knapsack are also the, the problems that inspire the, the time space trade offs in, in this area. And also, the, this question also inspires some parameterized algorithms. So, so there are some, several words uh, that uh, try to get uh, break this in the middle algorithm for, for some choice of parameters. So, this is a very nice question. I don't know how to, what the correct answer. It's the, but, but, yeah, I like to work on this question. Uh, so before we begin, let, let me tell you the meeting the middle algorithm for subset sums that was in 2 to the n half time and 2 to the n and school space from 70s. Okay. Uh, so recall that the subset sum problem is you are given the set of n numbers and a target p, and your goal is to find a subset of these numbers that sum 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 to t. So I'm using this uh, strange notation that is a little modern. So W of X is this uh, for the for the set of indices is the set sum of the elements that have have these indices. And I'm, I will also use this uh, W to the two to the X uh, notation to 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 encode the set uh, of the sums of the elements. So, so this is the, the notation. The modern notation for subset sum. Okay, you can see it in all the modern papers on subset sum. Okay, so let, let's uh, let's explain the algorithm from the seventies. So first thing, what you do is you partition the set into two 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 halves. So we have set L, that is the set of elements from one to one half, and the the rest, the right set. Okay. And what we are going to do is we are going to enumerate all the all the sums of the all the subsets of the capital L set, and we will call it the calligraphic L. Okay, 
So th this is just enumerating all of the sums, uh, all of the all of the subsets of this uh, capital set, and then computing the sum of all these elements. And we are going to uh, do exactly the same for the right set. So we are going to enumerate this uh, capital R set and we have a calligraphic R. And the next thing is we are going to sort this cal calligraphic L into this calligraphic R. And uh, then what we, we need to do is basically to find two sets, uh, two, two numbers in this table uh, that sum up to C. So we are going to look for X in this cal calligraphic L and this C minus X in this calligraphic R. We can do this in on several different uh, different uh, there are several methods to do this. You can iterate over every element in this blue blue table and do binary search for, for the c minus x. So it's uh, it's uh, sorted. So it's a standard thing, and we can also do the and it will take you the n log n time one and the size of this calligraphic L. You can do this a little more clever in n time by using this two pointer method or this uh, caterpillar method. So, so you will iterate. So you will you will have two pointers, one on the on the on the, on the smallest element in this calligraphic L and one on the uh, highest element of, on this calligraphic L. And you are going to, uh, to 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 move these pointers depending on whether the sum is greater or smaller than t. So you can look look for them. This and then eventually, if there is a solution, you will find you, you will find this solution. So, 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 so yeah. And if you find this solution, that then you can say the output uh, answer that yes, that the, the, the answer to the subset sum is here. And uh, the time and space are basically to, to be in half because uh, yeah, to, you need to enumerate this uh, this uh, blue table and red table and. Uh, and uh, this, the, the, their size is two to be in half, and to do the binary search and sorting, you need to unlock n times. So, so it's some polynomial factor, extra polynomial factors. So any questions to that? That's a standard algorithm. Okay. Uh, so let's do Schroeppel and Shamir now. So we are going to show the two to the n half time algorithm and uh, two to the n over four space. And the idea is uh, pretty straightforward. So now we are going to partition the, the, the space into four, four groups, uh, L1, L2, L, R2, and R1, OK? And as before, we are going to enumerate this calligraphic L1 set, which is the set of the sums of all the subsets of this uh, capital L1. And we do this for all, all this uh, calligraphic L2, calligraphic R2, and calligraphic R1. Okay. And uh, what I can basically say now is we are going to solve uh, something that is called for some problem on, on this input. And so, 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 so the for some problem is you are given four four sets and a target T, and your goal is to find four 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 numbers that sum up to T from each of these sets. And what Schroeppel and Shamir show is that you can solve this for some problem in linear space and quadratic time. Let me briefly sketch you how, how they do that. This is uh, highly non-trivial if you, if, you, if, you, if you don't know how it works, but let, let me sketch it. So you will generate on the fly, and on the fly this set capital calligraphic L, which will be exactly the same set as uh, Horovich and uh, shiny, shiny head. So this is a sum set notation. And the point is that you can generate this uh, calligraphic L set using the priority of Q, and it will have some, some, and some, some, some drawbacks. So basically you will have on the, it will look something like a heap. So you, you can have an access to the first element, and then you, you have to dis discard that, and you, you can move to the next element, next element in the sort sorted list. And you, you, you are going to also generate this calligraphic R set, 
uh, but now you are doing to generate it in the decreasing order. So, so on the top, the first element here will be the, the, the highest element in this series, in this sense, at Kaliadic R. And you are going to basically use this two pointers technique to find, find this set, uh, this, uh, this number X and th th these two numbers in this list that sum up to P. So, 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 so you are going to start with the lowest element here and highest element here. And then you are going to, to depending on the sum discard, uh, move, uh, move because in the previous step the, the sum was smaller than, uh, was too large, then we are going to decrease the, the sum of the elements. And uh, we are going to discuss this uh, highest element here. And now the, the sum was uh, too, too, too small, so we have to move the left pointer below. And after some iterations, we are going to, to find this, uh, these two numbers uh, that uh, have uh, sum equal to p. And so basically the, the, the time, the, 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 the sizes of this list are uh, two to the n over four uh, from, from the same argument as before. And the for sum algorithm needs a quadratic time and linear space. So, so we can solve subset sum in this uh, two to the n half time and two to the n over four space. So, I, so, so this concludes the algorithm. I, I didn't really explain how to generate this, uh, this, uh, uh, this structures on the fly, but you can trust me that it's just using in a smart way prior to choose. Okay. Okay. So uh, basically nothing was really done uh, until 2010. Hogarth and Graham gave very nice algorithm for, for random instances of subset sum. So the algorithm worked in this two to the zero point four three three seven seven and time and uh, slight a little two to the zero point two five six and space. So they introduced something that is called representation technique, and later uh, later the Austrian this Tokaski and Nederlof in a series of papers shows that you can use this representation technique to, to be uh, uh, slightly faster than uh, making the middle worst case algorithm for subset sum for large classes of instances. I didn't uh, show it for all, all instances yet, but uh, uh, they managed to, to, to get a faster algorithm for large classes of instances. So what, what's what, what this representation technique is about? So so basically, I, I think about it like this. So so you are given a haystack, and the needle, and uh, in these problems, your your task is to find the needle in a haystack. Okay, and uh, basically, you can go through the whole haystack and look for the needle, but it's uh, too too much. So what what uh, what how do Graham and Zhu? Uh, get is they, they thought, okay, uh, let's increase the haystack, let's increase the, ha uh, the search space. Uh, but at the same time, we are going to, we are going to have some properties of the subset sum such that the number of needles is increasing. Okay, and now what, what, they, what they showed is that, okay, in the random instances, you, you can just randomly uh, hash, hash this search space and to look for the needle only in some, some random search, search space and still have the, have the property that there is a needle inside if there was a needle at the beginning. So this is more or less how the representation technique works. If you didn't understand anything, I will repeat it in a more concrete example. And uh, we will start with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with some previous work. So, I will explain how Austin et al. Uh, showed uh, 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 the, the main result of Austin et al. So, 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 so basically, I think about the result as some combination of some puzzles. Uh, sorry. So they combined three puzzles. They combined meet in the middle, they combined representation technique, and the naive algorithm for orthogonal vectors. 
okay? And uh, this way, uh, they reduce subset sum to orthogonal vectors. So, so I, I, I think about the result as reduction of subset sum to orthogonal vectors. And our main contribution of, of, this, of this work is basically uh, replacing this faster algorithm for orthogonal vectors, uh, replacing naive algorithm with a faster algorithm for orthogonal vectors. So we will replace it, and this will give us the 2 to the n half time algorithm and 2 to the 0 0.4999 space algorithm. Yeah, so it's uh, a little less than I promised. Like, remember, I had two here. Uh, but yeah, this will serve as a first test. First, uh, first, uh, first, first piece of the puzzle that we will have. So I keep talking about this orthogonal vectors problem. So what is orthogonal vectors problem? So we are given two sets, A and B, of d-dimensional Boolean vectors, and they have a size n, capital N. And you need to output whether there is a pair of vectors that are orthogonal. So basically, you need to go through all of the vectors in A, go through all of the vectors in B, and then compute the dot product and check if this is zero. So, so this is what we can do for this problem. And you can think about this problem slightly differently. So you are given two set families of, of, of the subsets of the universe, of, of some universe. And your task is to decide whether there are two, two, two sets that are disjoint. This is a different view of the orthogonal vectors that is equivalent. And there are two algorithms for that that are naive. So you can do this in quadratic time in N. Uh, so basically, you iterate over every element in A and B and check for the uh, dot product. Or you can have a linear time in N, a linear in N algorithm and exponential in B algorithm. And there are slight improvements known that use uh, polynomial methods. Uh, for the quadratic time algorithm, but we will focus in this talk exclusively on the regime when n is very large and b is very small. So we will consider a linear in n algorithm for orthogonal vectors. Okay. And now, after half uh, half an hour, basically, let me give you the plan for the talk. Uh, so first, I'm going to explain this Austrian and Toll reduction from subset sum to the orthogonal vectors, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to get a different algorithm for, uh, for subset sum and using a little different techniques that uh, works in this uh, slightly smaller space. And then I'm going to tell you about this uh, faster algorithm for orthogonal vectors that I keep talking about, and I want to advertise that it's basically based on the representative family framework of the Fominate from the 2016 that finds a lot of application in parameter type algorithms. So if you are not interested in subset in subset sum, then it may be useful for, for some application in algorithms. And then the natural question, natural idea would be, okay, we are, we are just going to replace this missing the middle of Horowitz and Sami with Tropel and Shamir. Right? This, this is what, what we, we done first. And unfortunately it fails. Like it gives you the nice uh, two to the four nine 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 and space algorithm, but unfortunately the running time of this algorithm would be a little higher than and half algorithms. Uh, but we, we introduced some new, new, new ideas to the, to the representation technique that guarantees us this uh, two to the n half time and this, uh, this two to the uh, 0 0.24999 space. Okay, so this is the plan for the talk. So before I begin with, the, with, with what I promised, let me tell you what I cannot do. So, First thing, what I can assume is that the solution to subset sum is exactly in half. So why is that? So assume that the, the solution is a le less than and half, so it's 0 0.49, or it's larger than 0 0.51 and 
then I, 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 we basically claim that the proper engine was fast enough. So, so you will randomly split the instance into four sets, and you can only enumerate a small set calligraphical one, calligraphical two, calligraphical two, and calligraphical one, and then run the four sum of this other thing. So I will not go into the details. You can do that, and you can assume that. And the second assumption that I want to make is that there exists a random set. Uh, there exists a random set M that is small. So think about the size of this cap capital M set as uh, N divided by 100. Uh, that uh, generates uh, generates al almost all the subsets of this set are having a different sum, a uh, different value. And uh, the argument is basically the same. So we are going to cleverly partition the instance into four sets. And uh, because this set capital M generates uh, a small number of existing sums, then this set calligraphic L1 will have uh, a small enough space uh, such that putting it into this uh, four sum algorithm will give you the faster algorithm for, for subset sum. So these are two assumptions that uh, are, high, uh, are, are uh, non-trivial, but uh, we are going to assume them in this talk. Okay. So now I'm going to, to, to show you the reduction of alternate values with this assumption. So we are having this randomly generated set M, okay? And the rest of the instance will be partitioned into, into capital L and capital R, okay? And we have the assumption that S is uh, n half, so this Y, the, the space of this white and yellow region Okay, so first I'm going to explain to you some absurd algorithm for subset stuff that will work in even even greater space, greater time than in, in the middle. So we are going to enumerate all of the subsets of L and all of the subsets of M. So we are going to enumerate L plus M. Okay? And we are going to sort these sets according to the to the sums of this element of, of this of, of their sums, and sort so them sort them in increasing order, and, and then the, the set, we are going to enumerate all the subsets of R plus M. Okay, and uh, now we are going to 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 look for two sets that are disjoint and uh, have some equal to three. Why, why we need the disjoint? So like, let's see. It's not trivial to see, but if you would have two sets that have the same sum, we need to also check that, uh, that they are disjoint because they, they, that there may be some repeating elements in this uh, uh, two to the R plus M and two to the L plus M. So, so we, we, need, we, we basically need to Sort this store this uh, all the elements and then check for the disjoint ones. And this is something uh, not So so we are going to do this disjoint test and now yeah, there are no sets. So the intersection is zero. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, okay. Let me do some extra observation. Now we are going to use assumption one. Uh, so recall that this set uh, capital S has size n over half uh, and half, and this set uh, capital M was chosen completely at random. Uh, so this uh, green plus uh, orange region is of size M half, right? Uh, so if we would enumerate only the sets from the subsets of L and the subsets of capital M that are only of size M over four, uh, then we would, we would also find the solution to subset sum. All right, so, so we are going to decrease the space by 
this, uh, and we are going to enumerate on the sets of size m over four. And then we, we do also the disjointness test, and then we also look for this uh, for, for two sets that are the same target. Okay. So so that would be the next algebra for subsets. So you, you can be very very surprised now what I'm talking about now because what we have done looks very stupid. So we had this very nice search space of two to the n half, and we have increased it. So now our site space is 2 to the L plus uh, N plus M over 4. So, so this is the, the site space that we are having here. And it's uh, way larger than what we had before. So, 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 so what, what's going on here? But re remember that this is the, the, fir the, 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 fir the first step, step of the representation technique. We are going to increase the search space. And uh, we are going to use the assumption to now. So, uh, so, so there is a nice observation, and that uh, that uh, if you if you have the the set a one from this two to the l plus m, that is a subset of l plus m, and set l a two that is a subset of l plus m. And uh, these two subsets are constituting a good solution to the subset sum. So that their sum is equal to T and they are disjoint. Uh, then there, there's actually two to the M half uh, many different, uh, different pairs of these subsets, different possible pairs. Why is that? It's basically from this assumption that all the subsets of this capital N set are different. This is the assumption that we had. And basically from the assumption one, because this M plus uh, M intersected with S is of size two to the M over half, uh, M over two. And uh, there are two to the M over two different uh, subsets of this set. So, so, so the, the, the number of this distinct, uh, distinct pairs is two to the M half. Okay. So what had happened? So previously we had the solution to subset sum, and now we have increased the search space, and we are having two to the m half solutions. So 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 search space increased, but we, we did it in such a clever way that also the number of solutions increased dramatically. And uh, we are going to to consider only a small fraction of the search space. So so. We will consider that two, we will hash them, hash the search space such that we will, with high probability, we, we, we will have a one needle in a haystack. So, so we can consider only two to the m half portion of the search space, which is basically uh, this. So, so, this is the size of the search space, and this t parameter is the number of solutions that we have chosen here. So, let me explain you the algorithm now. Uh, we are going to pick a random prime t that is basically the, the, the of order of the number of solutions that we have generated and the random congruence class. And we are going to to do the to, to iterate to all of the subsets of this search space and hash them. So so we are not going to consider all of this sets. We are going to consider only the t portion of this space. And we can do this because uh, uh, from this observation that the, the values of all of these sums were different. So we are heavily, heavily using this assumption to view. And the same goes for this calligraphic error set. So we are going to uh, hash, hash this uh, right, right set model of this, this prime of T and uh, arrive with the different, uh, different uh, class. But uh, with the property that all, this, all the elements of this subset of, of this uh, classes have uh, have some equal to t model of t, and then at the end we are going to we are going to iterate over all classes of the the, the, the values of this uh, uh, of the sets in this calligraphic L and calligraphic R and test for the disjointness. 
So this is the, the basically the reduction of, orthodox, of Austrian ideal. If you didn't understand everything, I will explain it one more time on a different size slide. But uh, let, let me mention that this the sizes of this uh, capital L, so, so this red region is actually le way smaller than the two to the n half. So, so if you plug in the numbers, it's two to the uh, n half minus some constant C times the size of M. So this is 0 0.189. And this is approximately this number here. So let, let me let me again sum up this reduction of Austrian et al. So we are going to generate two lists. If you are having this yes instance of half sexam, we are going to generate two lists, uh, calligraphic L and calligraphic R. We are going to sort, sort this, uh, and these lists are now a list of uh, sets, not a number of sets. In uh, Horowitz and Sami, but they are lists of uh, sets. And each of these sets has some value, some, some weight. And uh, for each, uh, each set with the value zero, uh, with the value i, we are going to, to find the set uh, in the R, in the calligraphic R that has uh, value R, uh, T minus i. And, uh, and we can certify that this is a yes instance of subset sum by just checking the disjointment between all of these groups. So we are going to run the OV oracle between the, the vectors, the, 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 the sets in this, um, in this cal calligraphic L sets and calligraphic R sets. So, so this is what is guaranteed by this uh, Austrian dollar reduction. And there are some properties. So sets in calligraphic L and calligraphic R have support of size G over four. Well, G, G will be this di dimension of the orthogonal vectors. Okay, so, so this is the property that we had. And the second property that we had is that this, the sizes of this calligraphic L and calligraphic R are slightly smaller than two to the n half, they are actually two to the n half minus C times G for some constant C. Recall that this C is 0 0.18. So, so the running time of the algorithm is basically the sum of all the OV calls. And remember that we only consider the linear time algorithm for orthogonal vectors, so, so it's uh, the, the, the OV over all the calls of the, over all the sizes of the lists. So now let me tell you the main message of the paper. So we will propose an algorithm for orthogonal vectors that runs exactly in this, in this linear time in N, and the, the constant in this exponent uh, of this G is exactly matching this uh, that is in the constant that we had uh, due to the representation technique. This is our G insight that we want to convey in this paper. Are there any questions? Okay. So now I will basically explain the orthogonal vectors algorithm. Oh. Uh, yeah, that the space complexity is basically the, the, the sizes of this calligraphic L, which is smaller than two to the n half, and the running time is uh, two to the n half. Everything is two to the n half, but you have to assume this property one. Okay, so now I'm going to explain the very interesting algorithm for orthogonal vectors, and we are going to use the uh, uh, technique from Pomine et al. paper. So if you don't remember, the orthogonal vectors is to decide whether there are two, two, two sets that there are two sets that are disjoint. And we also have this nice support assumption that the, the sizes of are g over four. Okay. So first let me start with something very, very simple. So you have two sets. One is S and y is, one, one is Y. And you want to somehow certify that they are disjoint. So if you could find the set S that contains all of the elements of X and is disjoint with Y, then you 
basically certified that this is the sensor that jumps. Right? And so there will not yeah, I think it's basically a free log. So we will call this set S as certificate. Okay, that's a super simple observation. Let's count how many certificates of correctness are added. So, so number of good certificates for X and Y that are the joints are basically you have to select all this all the elements of X. So these are D over four elements. And uh, you need to select elements from this uh, red and blue region. So red and blue region is of size D half. Right, and you are allowed to select the over four elements because you have wasted them on X. So number of two certificates for orthogonal X and Y is D half choose D quarter. This is number of two certificates for the joints of X and Y. Okay. And now let me present you the algorithm. So, uh, so in the algorithm we are basically selecting on random. Uh, uh, two to the D half sets uh, S1 that are certificates, so to, that are assumed to be certificates. So, so this set SI will have size D half. So on, on this picture, you have this, this set with capital A and some sets here and uh, capital uh, calligraphic D and some sets uh, that are in capital D. And you, we have selected uh, two D half sets at random. Okay. Nothing really happened here. Now we are going to compute the edges. So we will put the edge uh, uh, between the set in calligraphic A and uh, set S, if and only if this set is contained in S. Okay. So blue, blue edge uh, corresponds to the, to the part that S is contained in S3. S1 doesn't contain this element. For example, S2 doesn't contain S. And we, will, we are going to put the edges between S and sets in calligraphic D if they are disjoint. So, so set Y will have an edge to set uh, S3 because it is disjoint to, to S3. Okay, so we are going to compute this graph. This is the, this graph. And then the only thing that is left to do is to check whether there exists a set S that has a, a blue and red edge. So if such a set exists, then this is a good certificate that sets X and Y have to be disjoint, basically. Okay, let me briefly tell you what, what the probability of success. So, so let's fix X and Y. And uh, the probability that X uh, for, for a random set S that X is contained in S and S is disjoint to F Y is uh, D half choose D over four, because this is the number of good certificates uh, divided by total space of all the sets, uh, two to the D sets. So, so the, this is approximately two to the minus D half. And number of repetitions that we have done in this algorithm is two to the D half approximately. So up to the polynomial factors, this algorithm succeeds with a high probability. So algorithm is correct. Let us bound the running time. So uh, this uh, could be a little technical, uh, but uh, uh, basically it boils down to the fact that the running time is the bottleneck for the algorithm is basically number of edges. There are a little technical details to to, to get this right, um, but yeah, the, think about the running time of this algorithm as the number of edges. So what what we are going to do now is bound the number of edges in this graph, and I'm I'm going to bound the uh, an expected degree of this graph. So first, a little simple observation that you have a fixed set X and we are going to count how many sets S are there that contain X. So the, the search space for, 3D, for, for S is 3D over 4 because uh, 
we can select it from S from, from this red blue and white region. So this is PV over four. And we have wasted V over four elements uh, on X. So we have a freedom to select V over four. So this is PV over four plus V over four element, all possibilities for S. So now expected the average expected the degree of X is basically the probability that X is containing S and times the number of, of, of s and uh, this is this quantity right because there are two to the d possibilities of s okay. okay so so the total number of edges is basically uh, number of vertices in a times number of vertices in b times the average degree and this will be the running time of the algorithm so, 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 so this quantity, uh, this quantity is equivalent to this quantity. Yeah. So, uh, same tautology. So, to prove it, you can you can think about how to select uh, v over four, v over four, and v over half elements from the set of the elements. And as I mentioned before, there are several difficulties how to get this algorithm right. Uh, so how to so the trick this the running time of this algorithm to be the number of edges, but uh, you, you can do this with uh, some deep jointness uh, oracles and some clever processing. Also, we, we need to take care of the space complexity of this algorithm for our purposes. Okay, are there any questions for that? Okay, so what we have seen so far is uh, we, we saw the reduction of Austin et al. Uh, and we saw that uh, you can solve orthogonal vectors with, with, the, with, with some assumption in this time. So n times uh, some constant times d. And if you, if you join them together, you will get an algorithm for subset sum that works exactly as meeting the middle. And it uses uh, less space than we can get. Okay. Uh, and next, I have 10 minutes. So I will uh, briefly sketch you how, uh, what will happen when, when how, how you can try to, to get uh, this space complexity even down. So there are only two steps, but they are highly technical. So we are going to see how to replace meet in the middle of Chopin and Samir ideas and how to extend the representation technique. Okay. Uh, sorry. Are there any questions here? Okay. So basically we are going to partition the input instance into four, five sets. So we'll have set capital M as before. And we are going to, to also generate the uh, find from random which select the set capital ML and capital MR. All of this sets capital M, capital MR and capital ML will have the same size, uh, same size and they will be chosen completely at random. Okay. And we will also have this set and the rest of the instance will be partitioned to the left and right. And the property will be that this left and right will be sm sl slightly smaller than, than this uh, size of capital M. But not, not that much. And uh, we will have this assumption that uh, they generate a lot of sums. And uh, what, you, what we will generate is, uh, is uh, four different sets, uh, sets that are between capital N and capital ML, sets between capital ML and capital M, sets and so on, and blue, green, orange, and violet sets. And basically we will have a representation technique that is, uh, that, is uh, that will be working on two, two levels and we will generate four sets, uh, calligraphical one, calligraphical two, calligraphical two, calligraphical one, that will have a guarantee to be 
slightly smaller than two to the n over four. Okay, and uh, now uh, the next step would be to to generate this calligraphic L set L set in the fly, just as Schroppel and Shamir did. Okay, and uh, but but uh, but it's not that simple since the, this calligraphic L1 sets are, the, are, are sets of sets and we, we have to check for the disjointness of the set. And uh, to, to generate this calligraphic L data structure, we will need to, to do some orthogonal vectors check. And luckily, naive orthogonal vectors will, will, will be enough. So we, we can have this uh, calligraphic L data structure that will work in this L calligraphic L1, calligraphic L2 time, amortized time, and will use only the space needed to store this calligraphic L1, calligraphic L2 set. And we are going to do the same for this uh, right, right side. And then at the end, we are going to do this merging step with two, two pointers technique and combine our orthogonal vectors algorithm as, as before. So, so this uh, size of this calligraphic L will be just as I described. It will be a little different than in the in the previous step, but the size will be roughly the same. Uh, so we have five minutes left. So let, let me tell you a little about uh, 20 pages of technical difficulties that we had to overcome in, in three boxes. So, so the problem is that this sets uh, M, ML, and MR may be not balanced. Like uh, maybe this assumption is not, not true. Then what would happen is if the set generates even less, even more than this, but less than two to the n over uh, uh, two to the m and and decreasing sums. So so then we need some clever representation technique to deal with that. And also since we are slightly modifying this representation technique, we, we need a little different, this calligraphic L set will be a little different and then the analysis of the running time is a little different. And finally, the major difficulty is the analysis of the OV without this assumption that the sets are balanced. So, 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 so we, we need a very fine grained uh, uh, analysis of the orthogonal vectors algorithm when, when the when the this uh, sets on the right and left are not uh, of the same uh, cardinality. Okay, let me conclude. So uh, I sh showed you the uh, sketch of the two to the n half time and two to the two zero point two four nine 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 n space randomized algorithm for subset sum. And if you apply the known techniques, you can uh, get uh, the same algorithm for NAFSAT and binary integer programming. And the key insight of this talk is that, okay, you can create, you, you, you can design an algorithm for orthogonal vectors whose complexity combined with the known reduction matches exactly the meeting the middle algorithm for subset sum. That's, that's, that's amazing algorithm. And in the paper, you will also see some uh, some new ideas how to beat meeting the middle. So, so we don't know how to do this, but we this reduction uh, gives us the new insight into the subset sum. So, so there, there, there is something, uh, some, 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 some problem that we call exact not weighted before. And if you could solve it fast enough, then you could beat meeting the middle. You will also see the missing details of how to combine Schroppel and Shamir with representation method, and you will see the lower bounds on existing technique for orthogonal vectors. So, unfortunately, to, to beat meeting the middle, you, you need to come up with some completely different algorithms for orthogonal vectors. And let me give you some nice open problems. So, so the main question is still on the table. So, so can you beat meeting the middle for subset sum? That would be amazing. And the second natural question is to decrease the space. So in the paper, in some preliminary version, we had we actually had the uh, slightly improved space usage, but the proof was too complicated to even write it down. Uh, 
Yes, and there's a natural barrier of our techniques that is uh, two to the 0 0.249 and so it would be immensely interesting to decrease the space to the be uh, something below that. So if you check, can you decrease the space below that? And the final question is to the randomize the representation technique. So it finds a lot of application in many different problems. And the main question is, can you can somehow find some arguments to the randomize it? And that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Harold. That's uh, that a very nice. Marvelous. Uh, any questions? Doesn't look so, right? Then thank you once again. And yes, thanks to everyone. And bye and see you. Bye. Oh. Thanks.